Hello and welcome to this quick tip. Now this radio control quick tip is all around these things. Uh, batteries. Now if you're in the hobby for any length of time you'll end up with an awful lot of these things and I uh, tend to use an awful lot of Hobby King batteries here. Uh, but I've had a really great question from a Patreon of mine, a gentleman called Jonathan, who was asking me to do a video about internal resistances of batteries. And actually that's a really great question because you know what, that's one of the few things I haven't talked about. Um, I have, however, talked about how voltage, amperage and resistance all go together and explaining the basics of something called Ohm's Law. I'll put a link in the description. I'm not gonna cover it in detail in here, uh, but if you watch that second video um, after you watch this one, uh, it'll make uh, even more sense and you'll figure out how all that works. The challenge is in the hobby is that because most of us are flying electric these days, if you haven't got an electrical background, some of it is a bit complicated. And what's a volt versus an amp? What's a resistance? But this time we're going to talk about the internal resistance that's actually inside a battery. Now this seems a little bit weird to say that the battery has an internal resistance because it's a battery, right? It has voltage and you plug it into stuff and it makes stuff happen in a circuit. It's not quite that straightforward. Every, call, every electrical component has a resistance. Even a piece of wire uh, actually has an electrical resistance. It's very, very low. Uh, but the battery has one as well. And higher C rating batteries have a lower resistance. Uh, lower C rating batteries might have a higher resistance. Different chemistries and different compositions all have different resistances. But they make a big difference to how the battery performs and how your model flies. So it's important to know what the normal range is and also how to test for it. The main reason for that is because when a current, and that's the amp bit, flows through a resistor, which is kind of inside here, um, a voltage is dropped across that resistor. So you might find that when this thing's fully charged, uh, we might have, just say, sake of argument, a 10 volt battery. This isn't, but to keep the math simple. If we had a high resistance inside, the current that's flowing through the circuit would mean that rather it being a 10 volt battery when you're pulling that current, it might be a nine volt battery. And that can make a massive difference and be the difference between you having a great flight and having a horrible one. So let me put up a little diagram to kind of hopefully explain this a little bit more simply. So here inside that battery, there are two pieces to it. One is voltage and the other is a resistor. And you can think of them in series inside that battery pack. Now, the higher that re internal resistance, the more it's going to affect the battery's ability to deliver all the voltage when it's being used and you're pulling electrical current from it. The other downside is the current flowing through that resistor is also going to generate heat. So that's where when you have a battery and you take it off the model and it's quite hot um, or quite warm, I wouldn't recommend running a battery till it's too hot to hold, it, that warmth is coming from the heat that's been dissipated by the internal resistance as a function of the current that's flowing through it. Don't worry if you're not completely following this, just know that higher resistances are bad, lower resistances are good, higher resistances will make the battery get warmer and it will also take some of the voltage off you when you're using it. Now the interesting thing with this is that the internal resistance of a battery changes over time. When it's brand new it'll have a very low resistance and then over time as you use and abuse it that resistance will increase. Increase to the point where it's actually no point using the battery anymore. Now depending on the C rating of the battery, how it's constructed, how much materials in the electrodes, uh, the quality of the pieces, all that will make a difference. So I'm going to give you some numbers in a minute of what the range that I use is. But be aware that different batteries are going to start off with different internal resistances. And to give you the first example of, of the kind of effect that the internal resistance have, let's assume that the internal resistance in this battery is completely jiggered and it's got a one ohm resistance inside the battery. Um, you would get rid of it way before this, but bear with me. Again, it keeps the math simple for this introduction bit. So if this is a 12 volt battery and we pulled one amp through this battery that has one ohm internal resistance, then we'd actually drop 1.2 volts from the output. So we had a 10.8 volt battery 
rather than a 12 volt battery. That's pretty scary, isn't it? The other thing as well is that it also dissipates heat and heat uh, you can figure out in watts. So like the old incandescent light bulbs that we all used to use, 640, 60 watt, 100 watt or whatever. Same kind of principle here. Uh, if we were running one amp through a one ohm resistor, we'd dissipate about one watt. So it wouldn't get particularly hot. Now to measure the internal resistance of batteries is pretty simple if you have a reasonably modern charger. Now this is the charger that I've got here. I'll put a link in the description uh, where I did a review of it. It's the, uh, one of two chargers that I use on a pretty much daily basis. Uh, this one has the ability to measure the internal resistance. So you just go into the menu, click on internal resistance, and it will kind of do the next piece automatically. Now you can manually check the internal resistance of a battery. I'll link to the piece that goes through it. What you do is you kind of connect the battery to an external load, like a, a high resistance that you know the value of. You can figure out the current, figure out the voltage drop, figure out the voltage um, as it's flowing versus the open circuit voltage when there's no load applied. And then you can kind of figure out what the internal resistance is. But to be honest, I'll let you read that if you really want to. Uh, my recommendation would be next time you get a battery charger or if you've got a funky one like mine, see if it has some kind of ability to measure the internal resistance and check your packs to see where they are on the scale. So let me just give you some practical examples. Here is a 1.3 or 1300 uh, graphene pack from Turnergy. This one is brand new. I've literally taken it out of the package this morning charging it for a flying day tomorrow and the internal resistance is very low it's kind of low single figures now that is good news that's what you'd expect to see on a brand new battery so here's a much older zippy compact battery a 2200 this one has been uh, used for a couple of years actually but i take care of my batteries and this one has you can see a much higher rating so for me, anything over 20 milliohms is the point where I'm going to retire it, even if it isn't puffing up. And that's the last couple of things I'll mention. If you have a battery that is starting to look like somebody's uh, stuck a straw in it and tried to blow it up like a balloon, discontinue it, discharge it, and dispose of it in the right way for wherever it is you live. Uh, other battery types will have internal resistances. These examples just use them for classic like lithium uh, polymer batteries, LiPo batteries that we use in the hobby. So we can figure out what the battery voltage drop is going to be when we're pulling 60 amps out of a battery with something like a 20 milliohm resistance. Again, 20 milliohm is the point, uh, probably actually just under that, at 17, 18, I'd, I'd be giving up on a battery like this. So let's assume it's got 20 milliohms internal resistance. This is quite an old knackered battery and we're going to pull 60 amps. We multiply the 60 by the 0 0.02 and that means that we are going to drop as soon as we start pulling that voltage from the pack 1.2 volts out the out the um, out the battery itself now you might see this if you have a, a battery monitor on your model and you do a punch out you pull lots of current you'll see the voltage sag dramatically and that is the internal resistance eating some of the voltage if you want to think of it like that as that huge current flows through the pack now you tend to find that smaller little packs made for park flyers that effect will be far more pronounced but that is what is happening it's actually that voltage drop you see when you do a punch out and it drops below that level where you still get low battery voltage warning is the internal resistance that's causing it so the nice thing now is now we know how many volts is being dropped across the internal resistance, 1.2 volts. We can multiply it by the amperage and get the amount of wattage that's been dissipated inside the battery. So this would be 60 times 1.2, which is 72 watts. Um, that's a lot, isn't it? If you think how warm a 60 watt bulb, an old incandescent 60 watt or 100 watt bulb can get, it's too hot to touch. That is going to cook the battery. So that's why... That I would say when you're getting actually in the high teens, that's the point where if you haven't already noticed the pack is performing terribly, just retire it, discharge it and recycle it. Last thing I'll mention on this slide is that uh, a battery that has a relatively high internal resistance, you might not notice it if you're not pulling those really high currents. If you're going to put a battery like this with a very high C rating in a little plane that's going to pull, I don't know, four or five amps on cruise, the effect, the voltage drop and the heat dissipated is going to be a fraction 
of what we've just calculated. That's kind of worst case scenario, but hopefully that kind of rams home why a high internal resistance in a battery pack is not a good thing. A few final thoughts about batteries. Um, treat them with respect. Now, I don't push my packs to their total capacity. I'm very careful with that. I know some pilots who uh, treat them as consumables and you know expect to get three or four flights because they're running them that hard in things like racing quadcopters. I don't. I make sure that I'm not uh, stressing them and when I put them down over the winter if I'm not flying I put them down to storage charge and just try and take care of them, balance them regularly when I'm charging them to make sure that all the cells are doing uh, the same amount of work. 500 cycles on a battery like this if you take care of it is possible i'd recommend when you get new batteries just write the dates on them and you can keep track of when they went into service back when i started i used to kind of put a little mark on the back of how many times i've been charged and discharged but this time i actually just use the internal resistance when i've just charged it to just make sure that it's still within acceptable limits even if you don't have a battery charger that has the ability to measure the internal resistance of a pack like this, then don't worry, you will notice when the battery internal resistance isn't great. You will see that voltage sag when you open the throttle. Uh, you'll notice shorter flight times. Um, there'll be lots of indicators that something is up. So listen to your batteries, and when you're starting to get those shorter flight times or they're not lasting as long, do yourself a favor, discharge them, cut the leads off, and get them recycled. And last bits of advice, always make sure that you're charging LiPos in a LiPo safe bag. Never leave a LiPo charging unattended. Always retire a pack that's starting to puff up. Um, that's definitely a sign that it's had it. I don't even have one here to show you because I, I regularly retire batteries that have got past their useful life. And the other thing that I would say is if you notice that a pack is getting wildly out of balance after every flight, and I mean by more than about a third to half a volt, then I would also retire that as well. That probably means that the, the individual resistances in the cells inside the pack, how one of them is started to age faster than the others, and that's just gonna put more stress on the other cells and it's not gonna last very long at all. So keep an eye on that one if you don't retire it straight away. The golden rule is, if you're not convinced about a LiPo battery and you have to ask yourself a question, is it okay? The answer is it probably isn't and it's time to retire. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you. That explains what the internal resistance is, what effect it has and how to measure it. Make sure that you are keeping track of your batteries and make sure that you're using batteries with nice low internal resistances and treat them with respect. They'll last you a very long time. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.